What's beloved Canadian author Donna Morrissey been up to? Let's find out. Okay. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's episode of All About Books. I am so excited to have the lovely Donna Morrissey with me today. Donna is the best selling author of six books, soon to be seven. She has won numerous awards in Canada and internationally, and she also teaches creative writing through Humber College in Toronto and Dalhousie University in Nova Scotia. Welcome, Donna. Good morning. Thank you so much, Crystal. It's lovely to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. Um, Donna, 2020 has been a year that I'm sure we'll all remember. <laughs> has it been a creative year for you? Incredibly. Uh, with all the phones, you know, not ringing and the doors locked, I've been having a writing feast. I've got a memoir wrote, I have a novel finished, and a second memoir almost done. So, yeah, great. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. And I understand that in the fall of 2021, uh, Pluck is going to be released by Penguin Canada. That's correct. That's the, that's the first memoir. Yes. Oh, ex can you give us a little taste of what you've got in there? Well, yeah, I'm not used to talking about it yet because it's still in the editing stage. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the title Pluck, um, followed by, it's a memoir of a Newfoundland childhood. And the rock is terrible, amazing journey to becoming a novelist. So that's the tagline. Just so people don't think pluck is plucking chickens. It's, oh. <laughs> pluck as in, it's pluck as in moxie or as in grit. It's uh, that kind of pluck. The audacity. Oh, it's, it's a great title. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. While you were writing this book, I know you said that it is a memoir, but did you learn anything about yourself through this writing process? Oh, uh, I learned, um, typically when I'm writing is fiction. So I'm writing through the filter of characters and they carry the emotion. This was a different kettle of fish, writing uh, a memoir because there was no filter. Uh, so I had to connect with just me because I am the hero of the story. That was challenging because I felt as though I was indulging you know just mm -hmm. so I actually wrote the first draft as though it were fiction and <laughs> got, had it sent back by a penguin and saying oh, where's Donna <laughs> this is not you you're not a character and so I had to start anew and uh, write it all over again this time through the eyes of me and not a character you know and so, yeah it's, it's a little um, daunting to write about self in such a manner I bet. I imagine um, you would feel quite vulnerable at times. Yes, there's a, there are things that you don't want to say. And uh, there are th even now I'm going third person, there are things you don't want to say. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so you, you learn how to write a story through a trajectory of, you know, this scene, that scene, that scene, that scene, that scene. And there's so much in a life. How do you discriminate between what goes into a memoir and what doesn't? Mm -hmm. And so, so that was really challenging. And there were many scenes that I wrote that got cut out because um, what was the word my agent kept using? You're diverging from the story. <laughs> so, so, you know, in the end, I was like, oh, fuck, everything is a divergence <laughs> because everything goes, you know, there's so much to write about. Mm -hmm. But you, you kind of learn, you know, with page count, word count, and a good editor, what really fits into your story. So basically, you know, you kind of learn what the heart of your story is. For example, I didn't want to write about uh, the relationships with men because right. I didn't feel that they fit into my story of, of becoming an author and um, the tragedies that I encountered in my life. Although I might say all of the relationships were tragedies, <laughs> but they weren't, 
<laughs> you learn what I wanted to write about. So you learn how to not go there and how to not go there. You learn how to rein yourself in, stay focused to your tagline. So it's good to have that tagline. You know, uh, for you know, as I said, a memoir of a Newfoundland child and the ruckus terrible, amazing journey to becoming an author. So there's a lot in there. So I kept it focused on that trajectory. Right. And that kind of kept me from diverging too far into uh, side stories. That might sound like a lot of mumble jumble, but I bet you to anyone out there trying to write a memoir, they're going to go, yes, yes, I know exactly what you mean, you know. Now, uh, you, you have an incredible journey of getting to writing. And I know for some people, who have the dream of becoming a writer, they might think, oh, I'm too old, or, you know, I should have started this when I was 20. Can you just share a little bit? Because you were later, you came to writing a little later in life. Can you kind of- Yeah, I was, I was 40 years old before I picked up a pen to write anything. So it's never too late, and it's never too late. And, uh, and I had never journaled as a kid. I had never written these, you know, I had never written anything. So it was all quite new to me. Everything was new to me. And, uh, and it was kind of one of these moments where you meet somebody and um, they introduce you to the idea and the idea holds spark, even if it's yeah. just a novelty yeah. and you're kind of flattered by the notion, which is what happened. And uh, yeah. I just started writing pre-association stuff, just, just indulge it and everything. And then it just took off from there. I, I was 40 years old, but I was immersed in this old concept of writing and then creative writing. And, um, but there was so much I had in my life that had happened to me, tragedies and, and incredible experiences that um, even though I was writing fiction, it was really all about who I was and what had happened with me. And I just wrote it through a creative lens, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah, I think it's worked very well. <laughs> yeah, it did. Thank God. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Well, one of one of the things I've done through social media, Donna, is I've asked book lovers if you could have an author who come to dinner and ask them anything, what would you want to know? And Marilyn Black from Barry, she would like to know what advice would you give your 10 year old self? My 10 year old self? 10 year old self, yes. Jesus. Step out from behind the arm. I was always walking around like this. Yeah. So shy. So, uh -huh. so shy. And I think that 10 years old, you have especially where I was born and raised in the isolation, you know, on the beaches where we had very limited, we didn't even have television when I was 10 years old. So yeah. I, I don't know to, <laughs> what an interesting question. Thank you so much. I have no <laughs> idea what I say to her. Your world is going to change. You're not always going to be uh, so sheltered, but you don't even know you're sheltered at that point. So oh, maybe I'd say stay where you are, stay sheltered. <laughs> as you can <laughs> that's lovely um your stories donna they're so much a part of your culture you know they're rooted in newfoundland but also nova scotia and and alberta as well um do you see yourself ever writing a story that's outside of these settings why <laughs> yeah well There's yeah no exactly we have such an incredibly rich culture mm -hmm. and uh and it doesn't matter about where you go it is the mm -hmm. story you can fit a story into any culture anywhere i mean mm -hmm. kiss law got published in in japan for god's sakes you know so yeah. what does location have to do with anything it, it's just, it's a story if you can connect with the reader if you have the emotional uh, that emotion running through your story that a reader can connect with, mm -hmm. then you, you've got that story. It doesn't matter where, where it is. Yeah. Oh, I love that answer. <laughs> um, Thank you. You're welcome. After writing, I understand that teaching is a passion of yours. Um, how does being an educator influence your writing? 
It tells me what not to do. And I mean that seriously. I, I learned from what not to do. And I also learn how to put things into context of what I do know. So when I'm teaching, uh, I get to channel everything that I learn. That I'm not even aware of that I've learned. Mm -hmm. And I get to put it into context and uh, shape it, take it out of the chaos and put it into some kind of order and present it to others. And I, re I really get a lot from that. And, and people who are learning how to write are so eager. And so, you know, they keep me inspired because I just get inspired through their, you know, through them. And yeah, I really love teaching and editing. I love editing other people's work. I just love that. You know, I can see what they're doing. I can see their idea and I can see how to make it, how to help them make it work. So that inspires me a lot as well. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And do you have a lot of, um, writers that you work with when you're doing your novel or is it strictly through no yeah yeah no uh i have dead writers you know um i have my heroes and um and they're george Eliot, uh joseph conrad i i i i go to these people and because they can't influence my voice they're so different from me Yes. So if I was reading a contemporary, I'm scared to death that I'm going to adopt their voice. I'm going to uh, screw up in some way. So I go through these old, I mean, they're the greats. They're the teachers. You want a teacher, you might as well go to the greats. So they're <laughs> yeah. who I go to. And, and Cormac McCarthy is not dead. And he's one of my most uh, you know, valued uh, teachers right now. I just look at his writing and read his writing and... Uh, is incredible usage of words and, and fearlessness in using words and going over the top. He's an incredible teacher. And there are others. I loved um, Isabella Allende when I first started out because she goes into, you know, the mythic and uh, the spiritual and the, you know, that sense of surrealness that mm -hmm. I, I like working with as well when I'm writing. So you go through these incredible giants of literature, you know, and you let them guide you and give you courage, give you permission to go deeper and further with words. So. If you could have any one of them over for dinner, who would you have? George Eliot. Yes. She isn't she the greatest of all? Yeah. And what, I think she, yeah. Yeah. And what would you ask her, Donna? I don't think I have the intelligence to be able to ask for anything. I, I would just not know how to formulate a question. Their greatness is so, so great. To, so just to listen to her talk about the process, her process, that would, you know, that would all be. Oh. And one of the things that I think is really beautiful, your mother said, most times our greatest teachers are those who walk along the same shores as ourselves. How has your mother influenced your work, Donna? I, in my life, you know, uh, I guess all of the heroes in my books are, are the unsung heroes. You know, those who walk quietly amongst us that are invisible. We don't see them as teachers. They're just people who live next door. Who, who uh, But yet when you're growing up, you're so influenced by some of the things that you see and do. And of course, you're not conscious. You know, that 10-year-old girl back there is not aware of what she's seeing. But as the adult, when you go back through what you have done and what you have seen, and you're seeing it in you, you're seeing it through the eyes of an adult, not the defensive eyes as that little 10 year old girl, you know, yeah. and you're able to put it in perspective. So when I look back through the years, and uh, of course my mother is the most salient person of all, uh, uh, and we suffered tragedies in our family and incredible grief and suffering. And uh, when I look back at how my mother walked through that without bending, without yielding, without falling yes that, that I, I just find such the encourage the courage and strength that she had so that influences all of my 
heroines and heroes in, in my books, you know. And yeah, I can't say enough about that. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Donna, a great big thank you today for being a guest on uh, Crystal's All About Books. I've so enjoyed speaking with you and just learning more about this incredible book that we can expect out in the fall of 2021, Pluck. Great title. And I certainly wish you and your family a very festive holiday season. 